Hello guys! I have to confess, of course, I miss good old times when the greatest news that you get during the week might have been, I don't know, buying a new sweater or watching a good movie. But when you live in a country at war, during the week you receive so many different news and you try to follow them. And some of uh, these updates make you feel very sad, others make you feel happy because they bring you a victory one step closer. But what I have definitely learned during this more than two years of full-scale war and more than 10 years of Russian war in Ukraine in general, that everything is very dynamic and everything can change in a second. But at the same time, it is unbelievable how many things happen for a Ukrainian in a week. That's why I've decided to summarize these most important events from the perspective of an ordinary Ukrainian and share them with you today. Let me know if you like this format. And if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe. My name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you join the community of the channel, you will definitely help us fight against Russian propaganda, fake news, and I'm sure together we will witness Ukrainian victory. And my longtime friends, you know I love you. Check your subscription status and hit notification button. So during this week, there were lots of things happening. Some of them were really positive and demonstrated the strength, resilience of Ukrainian armed forces. Others were really tragic and perhaps to make it bearable, I will try to mix all of these events uh, one after another, good news, bad news, and so on. So, uh, well, first of all, we may say that we will start with this fresh good news. And this is the destruction of an oil depot in Feodosia, which is on the territory of temporarily, and I stress it, very temporarily occupied Crimea. This oil depot was destroyed. And what is most important, it's not just an ordinary oil depot, it's the one that was used purely for military needs. Unfortunately, Crimea was turned into a military base, which is really bad for the ecology. And uh, I'm sure when it returns back to Ukraine, you will be able to travel, to explore the sea, the mountains. It's the only zone in Ukraine that has subtropical climate. And of course, it should not be a military base. What makes me feel good is that during this last month, more and more military targets were destroyed in Crimea, leaving it quite vulnerable. I am sure soon we will see a Crimean bridge on fire and even generals in Germany were talking about that. Unfortunately, caught by Russian spies. This is, by the way, a very alarming and negative signal because we are talking about a NATO country and this demonstrates the vulnerability of uh, the systems of communication. We all know that now Germany is talking a lot about the dangers of sending long-range missiles to Ukraine, which, of course, as a Ukrainian, I consider wrong. It's just uh, a kind of narrative that was brought uh, in media, not even by Russia, but by many countries when they were saying, oh, we cannot give you this or that because it will look as if we target Russia by ourselves. Actually, it is these countries who introduced this idea and later Russian fake diplomacy decided to use it. Before that, Russians did not think that way. Actually, we have given them this idea, which is very wrong. Because once again, if I win a marathon wearing, I don't know, American sneakers, this does not mean the victory is American. The victory is uh, of the athlete. So if Ukrainians target Russia with uh, missiles from France, these are Ukrainians. And most importantly, just look at how we destroy targets deep inside Ru Russia, inside uh, Russian Ria, in St. Petersburg, in Moscow, in Chelyabinsk, in Ufa, and nothing happens. And Crimea is constantly on fire. They warn that if only something happens, nuclear strike is immediate, but nothing is happening. Why? Because Russia is a bully and it uses this just to blackmail the world. So I hope people will get through that. And um, of course, we have to be secure and we have to realize there are millions of Russian or pro-Russian spies around us and united we stand because they will continue shaking not just Ukrainian territories but also the democratic structures all around Europe and Northern America and elsewhere in the world. 
uh, on this uh, background, on this note, it was really nice to hear the idea of the President Macron to send uh, real NATO European EU troops to Ukraine. I mean, like real soldiers, which is a breakthrough and perhaps it is the first uh, mentioning of such idea from the EU leader. Of course, that would be great. But as a Ukrainian, I have to confess, I doubt it is very likely. Remember to subscribe to demonstrate your solidarity with Ukraine and to help us fight against the evil Russian Empire because it is a danger for the whole world. And maybe, maybe it, it will be real. Just I want to be mistaken. And I, honestly, as a Ukrainian, I would like to see NATO or EU uh, troops on Ukrainian lands. But you see, the reaction was huge and like everyone was saying, no, 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 this is not going to happen. Anyway, what is good that Ukrainian pilots continue training on F-16 aircraft and now they uh, perhaps finalize their training because they are extremely motivated and this course it has to be condensed because we don't have time during war and we are losing lots of people when we cannot destroy Russian bombers. And, uh, but we can, as you see, but in general, uh, the pilots are now targeting uh, real, uh, real targets on uh, the ground, which is perhaps the final stage of training. And I'm very grateful to F-16 Coalition, to the Netherlands, to Denmark, to the US, to all the beautiful countries that train our pilots. And hopefully sometime soon we will see F-16s in Ukrainian skies destroying Russian aircraft. But we are destroying Russian aircraft like crazy and this is a huge breakthrough of uh, February, I'd say. We've destroyed like 14 of them in a row and one A-50 jet. Um, yesterday we have destroyed another Su and I did not record any messages about that because I felt you might be tired. But I, as a Ukrainian, can never be tired learning more about the destruction of their Su's. <clears throat> Also, uh, it was really sad to watch the funeral of Navalny and it was sad not just because it's a funeral and a person was killed, but also the number of people who appeared on the streets was really low, taking into account it's a huge Russia, it's Moscow and they have this dictatorship for decades and new elections are approaching. but. I don't see any real opposition inside Russia. I don't see real movements. I know many of you will comment and say it's very dangerous to protest in Russia, but it's very dangerous to continue living like that in Russia too, because I believe that this execution of Navalny will continue in waves of terror similar to the ones organized by Stalin. Putin is preparing to turn this authoritarian regime into a purely totalitarian, if we follow this political correct uh, terms. But it was really sad to look at it. And uh, from what I understand now, even the sending of Navalny is uh, forbidden, just like as an extremist slogan or something. Can you imagine the level of craziness of Russia? And it's another reminder to those who think it's possible to negotiate with such a regime. Go and negotiate with North Korea. What will you negotiate with them, guys? So, uh, also uh, apart uh, from this uh, news from Russia, there were really tragic news from Odessa after a very severe attack and Shahed drone targeting into an apartment building. Uh, the whole part of the building was destroyed, actually 18 flats. And uh, what is beyond tragic that many uh, newborn children died, like uh, small, very babies and three year olds with the mother. And um, I know there are lots of photos. I know they will be blurred in your countries, but this cannot be blurred in your heart. And this is happening daily. This is happening to my country. And I feel very bad when I need to persuade people why it's so important to continue supporting Ukraine. Just look at what Russia does. And uh, it's not just one child, even though one child it's a tragedy. But this continues. And what is bad, like I had this feeling when it happened for the first time 
everyone was cursing Russia, everyone was terrified. But when it happens for a thousandth time, people accept that and that's awful. And that's awful that Ukrainians are made now to persuade you that we are worth saving that uh, Russia uses lots of messages to distort us, to separate us, to cause chaos in your countries and uh, to try to find some arguments like don't worry about this dead Ukrainian children, you know um, the country is corrupt or something. Ukraine is not corrupt in comparison to Russia or many other republics that are treated very well all around the world and I'm sure uh, corruption is the problem that we are fighting and I would never describe it as core to our society and it is it cannot be an excuse also to the mass murders and genocide that Russia commits against Ukraine so this is awful and awful is the fact that you cannot show everything because YouTube will forbid that uh, Instagram will blur that and that's our Ukrainian uh, reality uh, also, um, Transnistria was the topic this week uh, because it is a fake republic supported once by guess whom? Of course, Russia. Russia is the producer of these fake republics, be them in Ukraine or in Georgia or in Moldova. And the so-called deputies of that Transnistria Republic, which by the way borders uh, Ukraine too, uh, asked Kremlin to protect them against what like aliens i don't know because moldova government does not seem very aggressive or dangerous at all anyway uh transnistria is really close to odessa less than 20 kilometers so we are concerned uh and this is another very vivid illustration why any negotiations or frozen conflicts with russia are bad and to finish on a like i don't know positive or <laughs> it's a little bit uh, dark <laughs> dark positive side according to uh, the institute of war february 2024 brought uh, the largest losses to russian army like they have broken their own records and they are doing it uh, because they need to demonstrate at least some minor victories for the fake election of their fake leader also because Ukrainians are waiting for the supply because we don't have that many supplies we are saving them and they are using it as an opportunity to grab some lands and uh, also because traditionally meat wave tactic is the main tactic in Russian army but they are losing people they are losing aircraft they are losing weapons everything like crazy and when we have enough uh, technology long-range missiles I think that even without uh, European troops on our lands, we will be able to stop this evil. And we need to stop this evil because Russia will not stop by itself. Remember to subscribe to my Instagram if you want more of everyday life in Ukraine. The link is in the description of this video. Also, I am present on Twitter, Discord and uh, threads. I never invite you to a Telegram or WhatsApp for a chat. These are scammers, so please be uh, careful. Thank you so much for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons and helping me film more. And we also have a beautiful merch shop with lots of items that work well as reminders and conversation starters about Ukraine. And continue talking with your politicians, with your congressmen, with those who doubt. Because we can win this war. We must win this war. And we will win this war. But the sooner, the better. Thank you so much for being friends. And Slava Ukraini!